Hey guys, welcome to the Match Play Podcast this week. I'm Bill, my partner here is Jeff. Uh, Jeff brought down an interesting piece of footage that he was using on the range uh, this past week. He's, he's got a really cool range set up here to help him neutralize his path and face, um, helping him hit straighter golf balls. And from here, I'll let Jeff kind of hop into it. Morning, Jeff. Hey. So yeah, on the, on the range, I was working with these uh, gates here. The one that you see currently on the screen is more of a draw gate. Um, with a club head slightly behind the ball and outside of the ball and then another one ahead of the ball and inside of the ball I'm really trying to promote me coming a little more from the inside uh, I do predominantly play a draw so this is uh, something I like to do especially when I start seeing a fade uh, out of my ball flight in my stock shot so this will just help me kind of see um, where I want that club path to to go uh, in the swing, as well as give me some instant feedback if that club isn't traveling in that path. So we can take a look here. Uh, my target out there is one of those orange spots, uh, not the flag that you see in front of you. And you also see me kind of practice a pre-shot routine. It's really just how I uh, feel I can get through those gates best. And then you know, here we go. So that one started just a little bit right on my target, and drew right onto it. It's probably like a four yard draw, maybe a, uh, a little less. Um, but I was happy with that one. And Jeff, what's your goal here when using this gate? Are you trying to really force your hands inside to out, feel something um, a little different? Way? Feel something a little different yeah, than what you're trying to do I'm normally? I'm pretty, I'm probably in that like plus two to plus four path range. So I'm pretty close to mm -hmm. uh, kind of getting it neutral. So what I'm really using this for is to, to help me, uh, I was starting to get a little negative in my path. So this was helping me get back in towards that positive range. I know when I'm playing my best, I'm in that like plus two to plus four range. Um, yeah, yeah, that couple yard draw that you Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, when getting to the zero path to start trying to make my dispersions a little bit tighter, um, I did overdo it and get into that uh, negative path. And I was starting to see balls that were starting right at my target and then fading off instead of starting right at my target and drawing back. Um, so this gate is helping me to get back to that positive uh, path, which is inside to out. Uh, if you don't understand positive versus negative in path. Um, and so that's really just helping me kind of get back to the shot shape that I feel uh, I want to produce and I want to see. If you guys have never seen this type of uh, head cover drill before, it's pretty common when working on uh, planning and pathing to help one improve a, improve improve your ball strike and your mm -hmm. you know regularity of what's going on in your swing, and two give you some instant feedback if you're not hitting the correct path. Uh, Jeff's gonna go ahead and flip these uh, on this next video and. Uh, you'll kind of see the difference of how his swing plane adjusts to trying to move inside to out and then conversely outside to in, become a little bit more neutral like he's talking about. Yeah, so on this next video here, you'll see that the, um, I've kind of flipped, as Bill said, those head covers, so I'm trying to get more of that uh, outside to in path, which, uh, is definitely what you, if you hit hooks, this is a great thing to work on this gate itself That previous gate was great if you hit those fades or slices and you need to have Something to challenge yourself to actually get inside to out because if you could come over the top You're gonna hit either of those club head covers, which is just instant feedback that you didn't achieve the goal um, And that's what is so wonderful about these is you do get that instant feedback whether you did it correctly or you didn't do it correctly. Um, and that's what we really like to incorporate into practice because then you get true feedback. Um, because if you're just doing it based off of feel, you, you're, you don't really know exactly what's happening, um, especially no. if you don't have a camera set up either. Um, but yeah, yeah a camera, this one, a track man, something like this, this gives you instant feedback on the range without doing any technology. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, kind of setup here. Yeah, definitely. And so in this one, you can see I get in my pre-shot routine here. I stand behind the ball. I pick my spot in front uh, that's between my ball and my target. That's about two inches in front of the ball. Uh, I walk into it and uh, set up to that point. And <clears throat> you'll see here I'm trying to practice versus the other swing. I practiced a little bit more of trying to get inside this one. You can actually see I keep my hands in front of my chest. I'm really trying to 
in my mind, what gets me to feel a little bit more down the line or slightly outside to in or honestly more down the line, almost zero to path. This is the feeling that helps me. So I see me practice it before I actually take my swing and uh, then I execute. And so you see that ball starts on my line and just has a little bit of a fade in the air, uh, which is exactly what I was trying to achieve uh, with the gate in this video. If you've never tried this before and you get to the, you see this video and you get to the range, you're trying it out, start a little bit wider. Yeah. This is, you know, Jeff's a good player. He's been doing this for years. It's, uh, his, as you can see, is pretty narrow. Not the easiest thing to do when you're trying to make a change in your golf swing. So start wider, feel it out, and then you can move them into uh, a distance from the club head that's a little bit more comfortable for you and gives you the desired result. Absolutely, that's a great point, Bill. Um, that is the way to make this easier if you're new to it. And mm -hmm. as you get better with it, you can tighten those gates a bit. Uh, additionally, um, moving forward with these drills, if you've already able to achieve a bit of it, and you're trying to really tighten up your dispersion or your path control, you can use, uh, for me, for example, you can use a fade gate and still try to hit draws, but not hit the gate. That's helping me zero out path because I'm still coming through a pretty tight gate. And if I come too far from the outside, I'll catch it, which is basically telling me I didn't achieve my goal. And so when trying to make my dispersion a little bit tighter and trying to make my feels a little bit more precise, uh, that's another great way to really dial in your swing. And, and again, you can do it conversely with a draw gate if you are a fader of the golf ball, but you want to still not come too far um, outside. Um, so both great things you can incorporate, two different ways to do it. If you're trying to really force um, your path in one direction, use the draw gate if you're a cut a slicer of the golf ball and use the fade gate if you are a drawer of the golf ball trying to bring it back the other direction. Um, and then if you really wanna start tightening things up, do the converse thing and hit your normal stock shock shape and it'll really force you to be really precise with your feel versus real. That's gonna do it for us guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in this week. If you like this content, please like, subscribe and share. Um, have some, you know, go out and make some birdies this week. Have a good time. We'll see you all next week.